lined with lovely European style houses that brought to mind the fashionable elegance of London's Mayfair. No wonder the Esplanade was a popular place for European settlers to see and to be seen. Can I go Back in the old colonial days, they would emerge from their houses to stroll along the Esplanade every afternoon. Here they would enjoy the sea breeze, exchange gossip, and perhaps even indulge in a little innocent flirtation. As a nod to our colonial history, Queen Elizabeth Wharf was opened within the Esplanade Park in 1953 to honor the coronation of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. If you have the time, this park will take you on a pleasant, meandering walk through the park to other interesting national monuments. The bridge straight ahead of us is Anderson Bridge, named after Sir John Anderson, yet another governor of the Straits Settlements. This elegant arch displays an excellent combination of intricate plaster and metalwork, whilst its curved structure provides high resistance to bending force, which comes in really handy since it supports the heavy weight of vehicles sipping back and forth daily. to the skyscrapers that now mark the Singapore skyline, just look to the right and you will see sitting grandly before us three beautifully preserved buildings that commemorate Queen Victoria, the Empress of India. The Victoria Theatre and Victoria Memorial Hall, which features the clock tower, are both historical monuments dedicated to the performance arts. Right next to them is the Empress Place Building, which was constructed in 1907 entirely by convict labor. Previously known as the government offices, the Empress Place building is now also a national monument and home to the Asian Civilizations Museum. The Asian Civilizations Museum is a treasure trove of history and culture that will introduce you to the world of Asian traditions. The museum features over 1,600 treasured artifacts in four themed geographical zones and includes a Singapore River Gallery dedicated to the history and people of our beloved river. Be sure to check it out for an even more intimate picture of the things you've seen and learned on this river cruise. Just a fun fellow cast in blinding white plaster, Englishman Sir Thomas Stamford Raffles, the founder of modern Singapore. The statue marks the spot where Sir Raffles is thought to have first landed in Singapore in 1819. Back then, Singapore was only a sleepy little fishing village, but Raffles saw enormous potential due to her location along the main shipping route between India and China. After signing an agreement with Singapore's then ruler, Sultan Hussein of Johor, Raffles set about establishing a trading post and free port on the island for England's East India Company. 
He developed a town plan, drawing up residential, administrative, and commercial districts along the riverbanks of this budding island city. The large building we're passing on the right was Singapore's first courthouse, after which it became Parliament House until 1999, when the new Parliament House was developed just next to it. <coughs> what is that strange disc hovering over Parliament House? Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Is it a UFO? <laughs> Don't worry, what looked like something out of a sci-fi movie is actually part of the Supreme Court of Singapore. Now, this is Elgin Ridge, named after the then Governor General of India, Lord Elgin. Fittingly, the bridge served as a link between the Indian merchants on the north side of the river and the Chinese community on the south side in the days of our colonial past. We're now approaching Coleman Bridge, named after its Irish architect, George Drumgold Coleman, for his invaluable contributions to Singapore's development. Appointed the first superintendent of public works in Singapore, 